Hey, what's going on? It's Disciples Cross, Everywhere We Go Ministries. I'm Minister Marcus. Lots going on. Um, it's going to get right to it. Just hectic stuff. Um, just a lot of just really, really overwhelming demonic things going on. This is Marcus. That's Clark. I'm coming to you. And if you follow us, thank you for the people that do. We're small, but we're mighty in power because we have the power of the living God. And that leads me right to the point. If I own a security force, right, and then, you know, they're doing a great job. I might think their rules are a little strict, but as I grow, I realize their rules were set forth, amen, to help me, to protect me. You know, don't smoke in the bathroom. You know, um, don't carry a weapon inside of school. Um, what else can we talk about? Um, someone's there, if someone's getting bullied or pushed around. I remember we had an attendance officer, Mr. Jack McBride. I mean, that was his name. And I should think he was a jerk. But he was just doing his job. He was making sure if I was tardy, why I wasn't in class. He was patrolling the area. And although as a, ch as a child, we like to rebel, really, it's a safety, right? It's, it's, it's for safety. It's for my protection. It's for my obedience. It's for my growth. Okay, I'm not getting gonna get into the why we rebel against authority, but it's really simple. Pride. I think we know better, and there's the point. My minister friend came up with a few things because over the past two years we've traveled to almost all the tragedies, either in spirit or in prayer, sometimes physical, like Parkland. And when I was in Parkland, one of the things that really stood out is everybody, including the church, would say that they are allowing people to heal that they're talking to everybody in the local community, the, every school but the school that the tragedy happened in and at. And I just couldn't understand that because when I was there talking to some teachers, thank you to, um, the, the, uh, the, he's actually the head coach now, that allowed me in and uh, to pray and talk and he gave me some insight about the fear. See, that's why the devil's doing all this. It's for fear. It's because fear makes you do things and it makes you do things you wouldn't normally do. And it makes you overreact and get rid of your security. So in Parkland, about six months ago, we got a word to look up um, what's going on at Parkland. And at that moment, amen, um, we saw that they took out this, what we, the Lord said, was a messenger, an angel representing thereof. God placed this man there. And he was, um, I forgot what group he was. But they were there to make sure to protect the kids. You can look it up. But the bottom line is the school district felt as if that they, he wasn't needed no more. They got rid of him. And the reason why I'm talking about that at Parkland is because that was symbolic of them getting rid of God's last line of defense. Do you get what I'm saying? When they got rid of the security guard that was loving on people, he was of God. He talked about God sending him there. The devil pushed out that last line of defense. And because of fear, the Parkland executives listened to it meaning the school district, the school board. So the school boards were about numbers. School boards were about everything about what the root is. The president, the governments, everybody's wondering if we should ban guns, do this. Well, we wouldn't need guns if we didn't have so much what? Hatred, envy, evil, greed. Those are the things that make us want to attack each other, rebellion, go back to Cain and Abel. So what am I saying? When that security guard was removed, it was symbolic of what we did to, not just in Parkland, but all the schools. We removed God. He's our security. He's our covering. He's the one that puts angels on assignment, right? So back in 1925, Minister Sweat led by the Holy Spirit, and he's going to tell you more of how and what God's been doing and why he's been showing us this. Yesterday, I got three visions before I found out, if you look at my yesterday's video, before I found out and was alerted about another school shooting, we were getting three visions about uh, Colorado signs. I kept seeing school buses with hazard lights. Then found out later on, like before, that God was warning us that something was happening. But he didn't give us the final piece to the, to the revelation, right? To afterwards. You follow me? So he's making us aware about, and he says he does nothing without warning a prophet. So he's warning us that judgment is here and, and wrath is here. But here's the caveat to all this. And I'm going to let Clark get to 1925 and what the Lord showed us. The, 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 um, the decay of, of sin and tolerance and curses that are welcome because of sin and tolerance. 
today another discovery that one of the children were transgender and the Lord immediately spoke to me as the news was on above me in Dunkin Donuts that Marcus don't you get it what I'm telling you in the spirit is accurate this is an agenda although I am the overseer nothing happens on earth without my governing authority and permission so to speak they're sovereign will and permissive will because of free will Okay, in other words, there's something that I'm going to accomplish, which is my word will go forth, my prophetic events, all my prophecies that I call forth have already begun, have some been accomplished, and will continue. Okay? But this is the attack of the enemy. He's going to take this transgender and he, um, young person, he's going to make apathy, he's going to create sympathy, and he's going to make take the attention off the big root problem, which is this is evil, this is demonic. These are literally demons, being uh, people being possessed by demons, or they're literal demons. Remember, the falling angels were once angels of light, led by the angel of light, the falling morning star, who no longer is morning star, but the prince of darkness, of evil, right? And they are here. Well, angels only can take on one form on earth to be cursed here as he sent to the devil on his belly flesh that's the curse that's the punishment right are you following me so a lot of times we mistake what we think as a human being keeps shooting up these schools a lot of times they're literally either demons or they're people that are possessed because the enemy found a footstool of hate oppression so now it's going to come out without me even watching news because i don't watch it i already told you unless i'm led just like i was led to that security guard being ushered out of parkland it's okay which is symbolic this is symbolic of, of the devil's agenda he's going to take all of the the onus off of him the evil okay the guns the hatred okay america's downfall we deserve this yolo tolerance and he's going to put it on that this person was bullied that and it's going to turn into donald trump it's going to be turned into bigotry it's going to turn into everything but the main root which is demonic which is evil which is that our country is divided which is our country is tolerant to everything but god which is that we're the kid that acts like we don't need the, the security but we really do it's really for our benefit long as it's not legalism so 1925 what started doc it was the scopes monkey trial and the basic idea is that a professor was teaching evolution in public school the ultimate purpose was to create a national spotlight to promote the agenda I believe the trial was lost and he was fine but it opened the door and what, what, what progressively happened over time pushing God out and allowing theory and basically the devil's lies in so right about what early 90s early 2000s what happened what transitioned it went from in god we trust um you know uh, pledge allegiance to the flag god was in that um you're still allowed to talk about god not much christ but god was still there but it was still antichrist but prayer was still allowed you had prayer committees you had different things where are we at right now and so over a 70 year period what happened no what is it about 80 year period what happened what was god showing us the decay and what else basically the lack of moral influence from anointed believers allowed more and more corruption to get into positions of authority in the courts and politics and through lawsuits it kept pushing the truth out and opening the door for lies to get in so first it's okay we're just introducing this idea of evolution and then it's we want equal opportunity to present it as though it's reality. And then it's, well, let's create a ba balance, uh, which is really an unbalanced, separation of church and state. That's been the biggest mantra of liberal progressives to kick God out of society. So where are we at right now? With our experience in ministry, with kids saying they're not really allowed to show their crosses, it's frowned upon. They're definitely not allowed to pray. The kids in our ministry that we gave Bibles and crosses and how they reacted, um, the, the traveling we've done. So what is the basic, so why are we, <laughs> why are we at where we are right now? What, what happened? What has God been showing us? Ultimately, the parents have dropped the ball, not just in the sense that they're teaching their own kids about the truth, but also about the constitutional rights of their kids mm -hmm. to influence the school from within. So when we got the call to help that young lady, I think she was in Ohio, 
this is uh, what the Lord spoke to us about the LGBT were doing a meeting so she decided to talk to them about Jesus in love and she, it was frowned upon but the Islam were allowed to do their meeting the LGBT but she, when she did something what happened as we're seeing another school bus with hazard lights which we've been seeing in the spirit so what did God show us about that through that experience of, of uh, reaching out to that young lady. There's bias, there's discrimination against those who have traditional, moral, conservative, biblical values, but they hide it as best they can to try and convince us we're just making it all up in our heads and we're crazy and intolerant. Bigots. Right, so on the point of why we have so many rapid school shootings, and I'm getting ready to talk about that, what does that say about the world we got with no security, no covering, so it's basically like asking me, me getting rid of my security team because I think they're too tough and then realizing that everything is awesome um, that they were doing. They were doing their job. So it'd be like me having me calling them and asking them to come back and set up shop, but no longer having that trust relationship no more. But more importantly, um, it's a little bit too late because, because I've already been infiltrated. You get it? Oh, yeah. So that's basically they're calling out to God now. God, 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 what's the problem? It's guns, it's this, it's that. But really the problem is is lack of logos, lack of the word, lack of Christ. It's the antichrist. It's tolerance to everything else again but with God. So now they're calling on God because it sounds good. But really what they need to do is repent and and openly confess that they need him. But what's, what, but what's happening? The hearts are getting hardened because of mm, anger, because of pride. And that spirit of fear continues to shut down and suppress uh, those who want to bring that influence, who want to keep it right. They continue to get authority figures with their fear, their biases, their agenda that don't want the Holy Spirit influencing all because of separation church and state, which is hogwash. Because Thomas Jefferson, that wrote that letter to the Danbury Baptist Church, is also the same man who wanted to use the Bible to teach our children in public schools. So that's an outright lie. Hmm. Outright lie. So what's the solution to getting the security back where it belongs? Uh, it's got to start with in the believers and the parents taking a moral stance for their own lives and righteous indignation against the lies in society. Because like Ezekiel says, Yahweh looked for someone to stand in the gap, but he couldn't find anybody. Mm. So you're going to have one type of atmosphere, either the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. or a power vacuum pushing him out and allowing demonic spirits in. And the more demons have authority, the more you're going to see the frequency and the intensity of these birth pains, these school shootings, and all the panic to find a solution. But there you are. Well, Carson's got an appointment. I'm going to keep talking. Um, he'll be back. And um, so that was a lot, but I'm glad he broke that down. So we had a pattern of um, things in 1925, people starting to attack the word through schools, brainwashing. And here is the other word that I got with the biggest problem. Do you remember in the 90s, they had um, the whole gangster rap thing and the government was starting to get involved, Al Gore and different people like that? Do you remember that? All right, I do, because I was always mad. But my dad always used to say, um, with heavy metal, it's devil music, and he said, man, this new rap music is bad. All they're talking about is is making my kid want to go out there and, and bang girls and hang out on the block, as he will call it, and be ignorant. And he's like, I don't want you listening to that. And I thought my dad was oppressing me. But again, like we talked about, most kids want to rebel against authority. But something told me he was right. Because when I listen to like EPMD, Public Enemy, Slick Rick, back in the day, eight, uh, uh, early 90s, late 80s, early, um, you know, things like that. Um, Eric B and Rakim had a message. Public Enemy definitely had a message. Although that was good hip hop. That's what hip hop was based on. Sugar Hill Gang. Now, I only listen to when the Lord leads me to because I do a lot of youth ministry. I want to know what's going on with these kids. Every song is manipulated by the devil see what the devil does to these kids that 
that are in poverty. He, he, he hones on these single moms and the kids that are in poverty with all this sport idolatry, music idolatry, fame idolatry, Instagram idolatry, YouTube idolatry. And what he does, he, is he knows that you want success and prosperity because the world makes us want that, right? But since the beginning of time, God says, no, all you need is me. I will give you everything. I am your light. I am the living water. Come to me. But everybody always wanted broken cisterns. We wanted a money system. We wanted to exchange gold. We wanted to exchange values. That's why Jesus took his belt off in Matthew 21, 12, uh, Mark 11, John 2, 15. God was a couple different times taking off his belt, his whip, so to speak. He was whipping the Pharisees with the belt of truth. He's trying to whip this church, these school districts into submission, not by legalism, into true submission unto him. Because although we look at submission as a negative, in this case, he's a security guard that we kicked out. He's the watchdog we kicked out. And he loves us. He loves his little ones. He loves us children. Even the adults were his children. So just like in the days of old, the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, he says, Yeshua says it's going to be like that in the end. That men will be given over to the desires of their heart. Men will be sleeping with men, men, women with women. Kids will be rebellious. That's happening right now. But God still wants to usher in the counter to the enemy's lies and attack. God's not the root of evil. That's the devil. So God's saying, come back to me. I am allowing these warnings. But you guys have let your kids listen to all this music that the devil is overseeing. These kids don't want to always talk. These kids are more artistic than that. If you listen to like Meek Mills and, and people like that, the guy Nipsey Hussle, they had some positive messages. But if you really listen to their heart, Meek Mills talks about the Lord. Meek Mills talks about unity. But then the agenda, right? The head of the Hollywood, the head of the, the money, the head of the China man that's behind the scenes with all the money, the Jews that, that the enemy has tried to manipulate through Hollywood and money, trying to take God's chosen people and get them to whore out. Everything has to come through the devil. He's the prince of darkness. His kingdom is music and entertainment. So if I'm a B actor, he's okay with that. But if I want to come become an A actor, I may have all the talent as Tom Cruise, but I'm not sucking and, 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 and selling out and, and, and every executive to get to become Tom Cruise. I may not be Steven Fuhrer, but I'm not selling out to Oprah Winfrey or T.D. Jakes. You get it? Because church members sell out too. Anywhere there is fame and vanity and opportunity, the devil and Jezebel is there, and you're not getting it for free. Are you hearing me? These rappers are told to talk about things. Future came on to things that I don't even, I don't even pop, pop Molly and Percocet. That's been years. But he's telling these kids pop Molly and Percocet. Meek Mills is about unity. Meek Mills got locked up because God put him there to humble him. Because God has a plan for a guy like Meek Mills. Meek Mills' true heart is he wants his community to be unified. And he doesn't want to be a drug dealer anymore. But he, the devil makes him glorify that in guns. An agenda. The devil makes people glorify sexual morality. And if anyone comes against it, we're the problem. God only wants to help you. Go to that, um, what's that big thing? Coachella. Coachella had an outbreak of herpes. The Scientology boat that was traveling, the cruise ship, had an outbreak of measles. That's not a coincidence. But a, two kids on the ocean that were led... Uh, because of a current all the way out to sea that were panicking for hours said a prayer because they believe unto the one whom salvation and who says I will deliver you of you making me your your Lord and your refuge I will deliver you in the time of evil Psalm 91 those kids experienced that because they had the true living God not the religious dictator not legalism they had the relationship and knew who to call on so they weren't led astray they didn't get sick they didn't even get um harmed even two hours in the water they should have just sunk to the bottom eventually right should have needed some type of cpr but they were fine because they knew and they received an emergency resuscitation from the holy spirit he rescued them but the scientology crews had a measles attack a few days back coachella had an outbreak of herpes so you don't think your father who created you same one told you not to eat pork because it's nasty not to control you. The same one said, don't get caught up in religion because it creates legalism and then you kill my children with legalism. So he's not trying to hurt us with rules. He's trying to show you that his guidelines are to help us, the morality. 
because when you sleep around, you have an outbreak of herpes. When there's no governor, no guidelines, and no security, no watchdog, then bombs go bursting in the air. And the great big wolf that's called America has no more shield. So what am I saying? You've taken God out for tolerance. You've, you, you, you no longer have people protesting against rap music that is killing people. Now, again, I love people know me. I listen to Meek sometimes. I listen to old school rap sometimes with a message. But sometimes I got to cut it off because they're just constantly drilling. Then the Lord said, Marcus, them young people underneath agenda. If I sell my soul, let me just rephrase that. The devil requires a blood covenant. Everybody talks about it. Everybody in Hollywood that has gotten out has talked about a blood covenant. They've talked about um, soul ties with evil, and that has to be broken. That has to be broken. You get it? So you can't come out of something and expect to just walk into something. You have to leave something behind. So all these people that are flirting with Yeshua, he's saying like Bieber, like other people, I love you, but you got to do one more thing. You got to completely cut the tie. Selena, Justin, all you people that are starting to know, Lauren Daigle's creating a soul tie with the enemy. The God of this age, the prince of this age, the little G, requires a blood sacrifice. He's a copycat. So God's saying that once you sell your soul, that's not the utmost blasphemy. The utmost blasphemy is thinking that you can rock with me and roll with the devil. You got to completely cut that tie and trust me that I'm going to raise you up properly. Okay, the devil is the one that controls, not God. So you have to cut your tie with darkness. You have to undo the ungodly soul tie and you have to be bounded and make God your only soul tie. And that's what God's saying. Church, school districts, you got to repent and say sorry and humble yourself and ask God to come back into your life completely. And you got to detach from legalism. You got to detach from tolerance. You, you got to detach from allowing everything in but God. And you got to just say sorry to your creator who knows what's best for you. That Scientology boat, if it was a boat for Christ doing the right things, not saying the church isn't pruned too, because judgment comes to the house of God first. And the reason why a lot of these things are happening to our kids is because we, as the church, because we're all part of it, none better than the other, right? Have allowed it to, because it's in our churches too. Tolerance is in our churches too. Okay? You get it now? So the Bible says that we are to judge the body and God judges the outside. First Corinthians, I think, 5 through 6. The body of Christ is meant to help each other. The Bible was used it's for chastening, for rebuking, and for upbuilding, right? But that's not going on. Chastening, God does that, and the leaders are supposed to help do that, right? But that's not going on right now. The body, uh, the Bible also talks about um, <laughs> that there'll be a man of perdition that be rising itself up, speaking tolerance, speaking itch and ear stuff. And Paul warns us that that's the enemy, that he's a wolf, creating, a de uh, creating an agenda. Do you get it? So I'm going to close you with some scriptures. I said a lot. So what am I saying? Let's hone it back in. Excuse me, as I'm trying to talk, the enemy's working. There's warfare. There, these are the birth pains. This is judgment. But God doesn't execute his wrath. Judgment is his warning. Amos, I don't do nothing without warning my messengers, my people first. So God's judgment, these birth pains are an opportunity for us to repent. Again, he's not the author of it, but he's allowing it because of free will. We have free will to kick them out. So he's trying to say in the best way he knows how without interfering with us, he's showing us signs to come back to him. You got it? Just bear with me one second here. Psalm 82, 1. God presides over heaven's court. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. He's pronouncing, announcing judgment on his beings, on his creation. Because this is only a one-stop deal. He's not really concerned anymore with our best life now. He wants us to be joyful and happy. But this is time to panic and come back to him. No meeting is going to fix this. No presidential conference. No government conference is going to fix this. Only coming back to Christ and realizing that nothing's a coincidence anymore, that this evil is allowed because we allowed it. Isaiah 34, 10. This judgment on Edom will never end. The smoke of his burning will rise forever. The land will lie deserted from generation to generation. No one will live there anymore. 
what he's saying that this earth that we all fell in love with that we are destroying we're not going to have this anymore he's going to slowly allow it to decay not because of his own desire because this is what we did with our gift you get it now are you gathering what i'm saying are you hearing what the spirit of the lord is saying so that's all the scriptures i'm going to go with there so I'm asking, I'm calling out the actors and actresses that are submitting to this agenda. Do you ever realize every time somebody in Hollywood passes away, all right, that they're always trying to, um, <laughs> create a delusion of why they passed away for the most part? Whitney Houston, Chris Farley, Chris Cornell. <laughs> you get it? Um... Or when they lose somebody, it's always a tragedy. Look at it. Look at the patterns. Look at up. John Travolta, has been um, known to ha uh, come out being gay. He, he talked about how he got the role with Greece. You know what I mean? He had to do favors, um, sacrifices. The enemy. That's how he controls with fear. Pay attention. This rap music is an agenda. Country music is promoting guns and sex. There's not even a variety of music that these kids have anymore. It's rap or country music, really. Back in the day, we had so many variety of music. We had a lot of positive stuff. Do you see it? Wake up to the agenda of the enemy. Pay attention to the agenda of the enemy. It's real. It's real. You got to pay attention. It's real. But we can't pay attention to what we're not <laughs> aware of. If we're not aware of something, my people die for lack of knowledge, the word of God says. Amen. So, Father, in your holy, beloved name, I'm praying that people become aware of the rap music agenda, the heavy metal agenda, the devil worship, the hate that's pushed. It's not just art, the agenda of television. More importantly, the agenda of the enemy, the agenda of the Jezebel. Expose it, Father. Father, you know I get overwhelmed trying to talk. Even right now as I speak, I'm getting a phone call by the same person three, four, five, six times, Father. And that's the symbolic of the world. It's, it, the devil's trying to distract us. The devil's trying to distract us with the with this agenda, that agenda, but but not focusing on the main root is his his agenda. And the main root is that you are not the author of evil or confusion. That's the devil. That's the flesh. Father, open up the eyes to why these school shootings are happening. In Yeshua's name, Amen. See, it's just keep happening. I'm out of here, guys. God bless you. I just can't take these attacks. Pray for me because I'm trying to do these videos and it's nonstop. Um, check out Matthew 21, 12. That's the scripture when Jesus got angry. Jesus got angry and took off his whip. That represents his belt of truth. He was trying to beat the people of truth. The church has turned his father's house, his father's house into a den of thieves. The repentance starts with the body of Christ. When we repent, the lamb will begin to be healed. If not, we're just going to have a slow, rotten process because cancer is in the body. There's only one way out of cancer when it's terminal. That's a miracle, and Jesus Christ is a miracle. God bless you. Shalom. Please, please, please stop feeding the wolves. Please stop feeding this agenda of devil worship, this agenda of gangster rap, quote-unquote. It's not true hip-hop. I love true hip-hop. I love messages, but not when it's constantly telling kids to shoot people, constantly take your anger out on people, constantly to get high and to rebel against your parents and rebel against authority. That's of the devil. God bless you. Shalom.